Okay, so this video is on um, aggregate planning. So the forecast for bots of cloth are shown in the table below. The figures are in hundreds of bots. Regular output capacity is 275 bots per month, except for month 7, when regular output capacity will be 250 bots. Regular cost per unit is equal to $40. Beginning inventory is 0 bots. Develop a chase plan that matches the forecast and compute the total cost of the plan then they are telling us that overtime cost per unit is $60 so we want to make a chase plan but I know the understanding would be how come we are making a chase plan but we are not limiting it to the exact amount that is on the demand or forecast I would say so this is not necessarily I would, I would not say I would say this is not a pure chase because a pure chase uh, strategy will exactly match whatever is on the forecast it will be in your production so this is a special kind of chase strategy where you have steady output i'll just say it in that way so if you have such a scenario then you will expect differences places of an even demand meaning you now need to see how best to cater for that demand in order to keep matching it that's the whole point so in that quest to match demand you just you'll be putting in the exact difference that will be being found in any month or a period that will have a shortage where demand is greater than production. That's what we mean. So let's prepare the plan. So now, watch what's going to happen here. We've been told that um, develop a chase strategy plan that matches the forecast. So you've been even told in the question that, okay, the production that has to be made will be matching the demand and they have got a steady output of 275 but it will only change in period 7 which is the last one but remember it has to really show that you're matching so what you're going to do is period 1 the focus was 250 but quite all right from period 1 to 6 they have a steady production of 275 but they have limited us that you have to match hence put a 250 here all right the next one, which is uh, period 2, period 2 has got 300, but how can you match the 300 if your steady production is 275? So you just have to show your 275 now. The max, that's the maximum you can produce. Yes, it's not matching, but that's where the overtime will come in. That's why it was stated in the question. Yeah, so overtime is just there to come and cut up for those differences, so that it makes the production match the demand at the end of the day. That's the whole point. So this is how you deal with a chase demand strategy question that has uh, given you highlighters of a steady demand, but you, you're still being asked to make it match. So that's what you do. Just follow it closely and you'll get the logic. So here you put 275. Despite them, um, the, see, despite it being a 300 focus there, but it will match. Don't worry about that. Then three, there's 275 as the regular, but... The focus is up to 250, so just limit your production to 250 there, because you're matching. In 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 4, 275, because there's 300 there. In 5, put 275 again, since there's 280, it's still larger. In 6, put 275 again. But in 7, they told us that the production has now dropped to 250, so just put up to the maximum they produce in that period, which is 250. And then, as we said, any differences... This is where this one comes in now, overtime, the one I've written as OT. So, how does overtime come in? In period 1, there's no need of overtime. We have covered everything. In period 2, we will need overtime of about 25. I hope we're observing that. To cover for that difference. So, the whole point is just to match. Nothing like close with some stock. That's that's the advantage. It's chest, chest demand then have a lot of entries. It's just all about matching the forecast to the production. Just like that. Yeah, so then period 3, nothing. Period 4, 25. I hope, I hope you're seeing that this 25 is just coming to cut off for that and even difference. Yeah, 5, put a 5 here. Okay, that's the difference there. 6, no need of overtime. 7 needs overtime of about 30. And we are done. It's as simple as that. And please note, period 7 actually has 270. I made a mistake. The focus was not 280, it's 270. Please take note of that. Meaning the difference should be 20 actually now. There. Yeah. 
for overtime. So after this, there's no need to put any other entries. Just go to the cost now and compute the cost of the plan. How much was regular? So when you're computing the cost, just compute the costs of the components that were given. So they gave us a cost for regular, which was $40, and also gave us a cost for overtime, which was $60. So if those are the only costs in the equation, just deal with that. So regular, you start regular. What's the cost for regular? So for regular, you find that they told us it was 40. So 40 times whatever regular, regular is production, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Regular, regular just stands for the regular production, that's in full. So you'll be multiplying it on every production figure. So 40 times 250, 10,000. The next one, 40 times 275, 11,000. 40 times 250 again, 10,000. 40 times 275, 11. In that manner. Okay, so in that manner, and I hope that is also making sense. And over time, over time, they said it's $60. So $60 times whatever overtime figure you find in any period. So 60 times the first 25 gives you how much? 1,500. The next period has nothing. The other one, 1,500. The other period, 60 times 5. So that should be about a $300. Then the last one, 60 times 20 is $1,200. So after this, compute the total cost of the plan. It's, so it's basically that. So this is 10. Let's add up this, this same costs only. Let's add up the costs. So 11 plus 1, 5 is 12, 5. 10,000. Uh, 12, 5. 11, 3. 11. Um, 11, 2. So I'm sure when we do our summation, it gives us that the total cost of this plan is 78,000. By the way, check what's in the box that I'm just boxing there. 78,500 is the total cost of this plan. So it was quite right, a very brief question, but you can see there's been some understanding or a tip that has been learned in this one about how you can deal with chest demand despite knowing okay chest demand should match the demand of forecast given but how can you deal with it where a company is limited to a steady rate of production and i hope this video answers your question